Um, and I think you're going to start to see housing prices begin to uh, a, a multi-year decade decline um, just due to supply demand dynamics. So you've had a demand supply imbalance, more demand, less supply. And I think that's going to invert into a supply demand uh, imbalance. And here's why. The bulk of housing, so 90% of housing in the United States is owned by households over 40. And then 70 um, uh, uh, 74 percent is owned by people over 50, and then uh, 56 percent is owned by people over 60. Uh, so you have the smallest percentage of home ownership of uh, folks under 30, um, and 30 percent. And then you also have demographic issues, and that's the five Ds, where there's going to be a real demand problem because households, household growth. Um, household formation is the lowest it's been 100, 160 years. And so um, you have uh, men staying single longer. Uh, the average age of uh, the first time buyer uh, significantly older from the low, uh, low 30s to the high 30s. This is year, years old. Um, and then you have what I call a um, growing crisis of the young American male, whereby um, it, uh, back in 2013, uh, young men were, and this is between um, 24 and 35 young men, um, were 50 percent uh, more likely to live at home. Now they're twice as more like, uh, likely to live at home than women. So one out of five young men live at home with their parents. And this, these aren't young men going to college and coming home for um, holiday breaks. These are young, you know, right. young grown men choosing to live at home. Yeah, and I, uh, can, can I can get into that. Having covered off on the report, because I noticed that you were suggesting, you know, there, there are a number of factors at play when it comes to perhaps, you know, they're gaming more, they're obviously you know, not having the family formation that you talk about. But just on that point that you're, you're making in terms of this lack of family formation, this uh, apparent impact that young men are having as well, how much of this is to do at the same time with income inequality and the disparity that has been building over the course of that same time period and the opportunities that aren't necessarily being afforded to that cohort? I think, well, well, thanks for asking the question because you can take that, the home ownership dynamic, and apply it to, to multi-generation cohorts. So let's take that cohort, for, exa for example. Um, because there's been so much, you know, zero interest rate rates have obviously ballooned inflation and particularly housing inflation in the U.S. and have priced so many people out of the market. But I think also, if you are single, the chances are that you're going to be able to afford a home on your own is less likely than if you're a, a dual income family. Um, and then there's, a, as you get older, um, it, this gets into, uh, in terms of savings. So in, in, in terms of seniors, 79% um, of seniors own homes, 21% of seniors don't own homes. There's a 50 to one wealth correlation or, or wealth ratio between um, seniors that own homes and seniors that don't own homes. So this is prolific through the entire um, U.S. economy, whereby uh, homeowners have so much more wealth than non-homeowners. And normally you would think as rates go up, home prices ha will, would go down, and that hasn't happened over the last two years. I think that will... How home prices will normalize because um, as more inventory, more inventory, more supply comes on the market, you'll see a true clearing plus price that is lower than it is today. So I would say 20% lower than it is today. 